great trioval at Daytona. Twelve great drivers started, raced in identically prepared Camaros, and after race three, the field was cut to nine. Here's how they stand. Al Unser, the series leader with 56 points, a two-time winner of the Indianapolis 500. Cale Yarbrough is second. He has won the NASCAR Grand National Championship for the past two years. In third place is Richard Petty. He's conquered all in the stock car field, but has never won this series. Darrell Waltrip is yet another stock car driver, young, talented, and on the way up. Mario Andretti has won Indianapolis, is currently leading in the early season standings for the World Grand Prix Championship. Here's Gordy Johncock, yet another Indy champion, sixth in this series. Johnny Rutherford has won Indy twice, but finds himself trailing at IROC. Jackie Eakes is a four-time winner of the 24 Hours of Le Mans, but brand new to this kind of racing. Benny Parsons had been eliminated, but now returns as a substitute for Gunnar Nielsen, who is ill. The stage is set for the climax of the World Series of Auto Racing. Three races down and one to go. Twelve drivers started, now nine remain. A crowd of some 50,000 people has gathered at Daytona for the climax. Good afternoon. I'm Jim McKay speaking to you from the roof of the grandstand here at Daytona on what could hardly be described as a typical Florida day. The temperature is in the low 50s. There's a wind blowing. It's very, very damp. Uh, very uncomfortable for spectating. However, for the race drivers, it should be okay. A little bit hazy, but they'll be pretty close to each other, so they'll be able to see the other cars. The track is reasonably dry, and, uh, of course, cool temperatures are always good for racing engines. Let's set, once again, the overall concept of the IROC, the International Race of Champions. The idea is to bring together originally 12 of the greatest race drivers in the world put them into identically prepared Camaros race them on different kind of race courses at Michigan International on an oval take them to Riverside and race twice on a road course and finally come here to Daytona to the great high bank tri oval two and a half miles long for the final race today will be the final race from the original field of 12 nine drivers remain three having been cut after the last race the leader is Al Unser let's bring in right now our expert on the sport Jackie Stewart, this is Scottish weather if I ever saw it. Well, I've got my sweaters on and my woolies, so I'm quite comfortable. But of course, these drivers down there, I think, must be a little nervous. I think the man who's leading this at this time, Al Unser, must be concerned that he must drive a conservative race. He can't drive too aggressive a race, but on the other hand, he still has to pick up enough points. But he's got to get his car to finish, and that's the most important thing. With people like Kale Yarbrough and Richard Petty right on his rear bumper, he's really going to have a lot to do. There's one change today. Ben Benny Parsons is in the field, and the reason for that is, sadly, that Gunnar Nielsen, a very talented Swedish driver, a Grand Prix driver, has taken quite seriously ill, and in fact is an Ill, Ill in London at this time. I went to see him the other day, spent an hour and a half with him just a few days ago. His heart is here in Daytona, and all of our hearts are with him in London. We wish him a, a very quick and happy recovery. But right now, of course, Benny Parsons is a happy man because he's in the final. He ended up with the same number of points as Gunnar Nielsen in this last race at Riverside that we saw, but he's in here now, and he's in to win, and he's in to do well. It's going to be close racing as usual. Let's set the field for the final race in this year's International Race of Champions for 1978. On the inside of the first row, the series leader, Al Unser, in a red car number eight. On the outside, the light blue car number four is Cale Yarborough. In the second row, on the inside, number five, the beige car will be Richard Petty, the king of the st stock car drivers. There you saw him. And on the outside of that second row, number 12 will be Darrell Waltrip in the orange car there. Moving to the third row in the cinnamon car, number six, we have Mario Andretti. Outside of him in the yellow car, number two, that's Gordon Johncock, two former winners of the Indianapolis 500. Number 10, the brown car of Johnny Rutherford down low. Outside of him, the black number seven of Jackie Ix of Belgium. And trailing the field, uh, Benny Parsons, the last minute substitute for the ailing Gunnar Nielsen of Sweden. The white car placed at the rear of the pack because it is a substitute. Got to be interesting if he got into competition here. And of course, Benny Parsons is very much at home in this great tri -oval. They'll be doing 40 laps, 100 miles, the final race of the series. The question whether Al Unser can cool it enough without cooling it too much. Visibility is quite bad for spectating, but it's okay for the race drivers. And they're going to get the green. They're racing at Daytona. Final race of the IROC series. Al Unser in the lead. Richard Petty down low, moving into second and challenging for the lead right now. Cale Yarbrough up high. Behind Richard Petty, we have uh, Mario Andretti also getting into the fray. As you can see, all of the 
cars are very much in competition as this race gets underway. Identically prepared Camaros. Remember this year they are more identically prepared than ever. George Palmer's done a good job again on that. Done a wonderful job. And of course you see these tremendously talented drivers all shuffling around. They're almost still in unison as they go around. They're tucked in behind each other, knowing exactly what each other are doing. The only odd man out in that might be Jackie Hicks in the black car, who's close to the back right now because he has little or no experience on high bank ovals. Nothing this high before. And remember, there is Jackie Hicks. He's on 31 degree of banking right now. And Jackie has never gone through that before. I'm sure he's never experienced the draft the turbulence that these super high speeds can be attained here at this Daytona International Speedway. All right, it's Petty on the lead now. Allen in second and Gail Yarbrough a third. Richard Petty is the leader. And look at that. There's three or four abreast round there shuffling for position. Each one of those drivers carrying an enormous ego with them. All champions in their own chosen section of motor racing. And right now, none of them want to give an inch to the other. Richard Petty, Al Unser, and Gail Yarbrough, the yellow car in the back there that came down low and made a big move a moment ago was Gordon Johncock, but he's dropped back again. There you see uh, Gary Arbor in the light blue car, but up on front, it is Richard Petty, Al Unser, the series leader, and if he can stay right there, he has no problem in winning the $50,000 first prize. That's all very well, but what he's got to do is finish. He's got to stay out of trouble. He can't afford to get it of contact with anybody else, let anybody touch him. He's got to be looking in his mirrors, he's got to be looking in front, he's got to drive positively, not too much right now. He's just taken an aggressive move by taking the leaders to cross the start finishing line. And Cale Yarbrough following him and now taking the lead again from Al Unser. Just that quickly it happens in the IROC series. Marvelous racing. And as you said, Unser has to stay out of trouble before he's right in the thick of it right now. And right now, because of the closeness, some of the accidents we've seen in past IROC races have been caused by the closeness of these cars, the closeness of the driving talents and the preparation of the cars. It means that there's no big gaps. And look at that. Is there John Cock down low. Three Gordy John Cock going for the lead. Trying to get past, first of all, Mario Andretti and Al Unser side by side on the high banking. Then to go after Yarborough and Waltrip up front. At the moment he can't quite get past Mario Andretti. That's the yellow car is John Cox. Andretti up higher. They're the leaders. In the light blue car once again is Cale Yarborough, then Darrell Waltrip. The two stock car drivers in the south leading all the rest going here. Headed again for turn one. And here's how the points break down in this series. A win worth 21, then 17, 14, 12, 10, 8. Notice that seventh place is worth six points. Al Unser must do better than that to win the series. Should Garber win this race? We're back at Daytona, where the leader of the race now is Darrell Waltrip in the orange car. Behind him, Gordy Johncock in the yellow car. He came from way back in the pack. In third place, Mario Andretti. Did he hit the wall? I think he touched the wall. He certainly wiggled very badly there. It looked like he touched the wall, managed to hold the car, and this is the sort of situation that Al Unser's going to be careful about because of Mario Andretti is the start of the time. Alonso was behind Mario Andretti, and then obviously there would have been a multi-car pileup, which would have eliminated the chance of Alonso to pick up any points, perhaps. Andretti did a terrific job of getting that car back under control, didn't he? There are the leaders, Waltrip, John Cock, Andretti, and Cale Yarborough. Cale Yarborough in second place in the series, behind Al Unser, who is right behind him right now. Let's take a look and see if he did touch the wall. And look at that, and did the car went sideways, it went into opposite lock, it went loose as the stop car drivers would see. Then he, it sort of went into a tank slapper, as you would in a motorcycle. The, the car went the other way, and if it hadn't been for the talents of someone like Mario Andretti, someone less experienced, I'm sure he would have lost it. It really created havoc in the cars immediately behind him. It did not look, however, like he touched the wall, did it? I think he very much could easily have touched the wall, but obviously he corrected the car before anything skidding up the hill. Back to the race now, we're still Darrell Waltrip, the leader. Gordy Johncock in the yellow car has moved into second place, now making it as if he wants to take the lead. Behind him, we have Mario Andretti obscured there in the red car. There he is. And down low, here comes Cale Yarbrough again in the light blue. Sensational racing here at Daytona. Can Yarbrough get the lead again? Doesn't look like it. Gordy Johncock is going to hold it for the moment. Down low, that's Richard Petty moving into fourth place ahead of Darrell Waltrip. Waltrip coming back on him now. And just out of your picture, there he is, is Al Unser, the series leader. Really great racing. Now, once again, the story is this. If Carol Yarbrough in that light blue car wins this race, he'll have 62 points. If Al Unser finishes seventh, he'll have 62 points. Then it will be a five-lap runoff. There's the way it sets up. One man missing in this picture is A.J. Boyd, who won the series for the past two years. He's not here this time. That's been a matter of controversy. And a little bit earlier, Chris Economaki talked to A.J. 
and to the series director, Les Richter, about this subject. When the latest IROC series lined up for the first race in Michigan, a two-time champion, A.J. Foyt, was not in the field, and a lot of rumors surfaced. It was said that perhaps he wasn't well, that he had high blood pressure, or that the money wasn't right, or that he wanted to quit and didn't want to race anymore. Well, A.J. is here with us now. A.J., what's the real story on why you're not in this year's round? Well, if everybody saw the last race, I think they could figure out, you know, I got mad when they stopped the race when Kale and I drafted away, and then the next time I had no brakes on the car, and they stopped it again so everybody could bunch up, and I felt like it was a kind of a, a fixed deal that uh, they didn't want me to win the championship last year, so I got out of the cars, and I said that'd be the last time I'd ever drive our rock, but a lot of people made a lot of different excuses why I'd never participate again, but as far as sick and high blood pressure, that's a bunch of hogwash, and... Uh, you really got the truth today. I told him when I stepped out and won the championship, that was the end of me racing with IROC. With me is Les Richter, the competition director and general manager of the International Race of Champions. Les, A.J. Ford had some really sharp criticisms of IROC management. Uh, what do you say to his charges? Well, Chris, uh, I, I heard what A.J. had to say, and uh, it's absurd because uh, in the time that I talked to A.J. about coming back this year, he never once mentioned that to me, and... and uh, so I, I, I just would like to say it, it's something that I've never heard before. He's a great champion. Uh, I hope that uh, we can invite him back to the International Race of Champions again. And uh, he's a kind of a person that is very competitive. And, uh, but for us to have done what he said, uh, ridiculous. Two views on the controversy surrounding the man who would have been the defending champion in the series, A.J. Boyd. Back to the race now. Let's check on Al Hunter, the series leader. Remember, seventh or better will give him no worse than a tie for the championship should Jarbro win the race. And now Al is in fifth place. Well placed at the moment. Up on front, here goes Andretti again. Trying for the lead. Down low, Mario Andretti taking first place. Carol Yarbrough in the light blue is second. Then Darrell Waltrip, Gordon Johncock in the yellow car. Hunter again is fifth, and Richard Petty is sixth. All of the cars so closely bunched that the slightest mistake can change the standings yet again. There they are, Andretti, followed by Al Unser now, and by Gordon Johncock, and Unser is trying for the lead at this moment as they go into turn one, and it looks like he's going to get it. He won the first two races of the series, he finished third in the third one, and he'd like to wrap it up as a champion, obviously, and win this race. Five by time, though, with Mario Andretti right now, sensational racing, Gordy Johncock in there in the yellow car. Oh, look out, an incident, and that's Al Unser off the track. The man who's leading the series is off the racetrack. That gives Richard Petty a chance to win it. I hope he's all right. Up over that bank, he appears to be all right. He's moving. There you see Al Unser and strapping himself. Oh, and Petty was also involved in it. But now Unser is getting out of his car. There is Al. Looks to be okay. No limping. No sign of any injuries that we can see as he unloosens his helmet. Look at this, though. Johnny Rutherford was also involved in the crash. The hood back up over his windshield there as the rescue crews approach his car. Holy smokes. Unser, just fine. Petty has not gotten out of his car. Uh, Rutherford appears to be all right. Here's what happened with those cars trailing with Rutherford and Petty. They got together, Petty backwards, but Rutherford suddenly looking at the underside of the hood of his car. Terrifying situation. It seems that he's had heavy contact also with Richard Petty in the back end of Richard Petty's car because his car seems to be badly damaged as the car slide down at very high speed down that back stretch there, this 3,000 foot back stretch. Richard Petty was pinned in the car, so the damage done to the rear end of the car must have either affected the seat belts or the frame, the safety frame that's built into those cars. And believe me, that's very strong, but of course remember the speed of the impact. Yes, and Jackie, there are Unser and Rutherford still talking over the situation, but Richard Petty is still in his car. No official word on what's wrong with him. He may be pinned in the automobile. He might have been knocked out. But you'll notice that the two race drivers, although concerned about it, I'm sure, are letting the other experts do their job right now. In other words, the safety and rescue people. Well, let's see how this affects the race. Now, three cars appear to have been eliminated all at once. However, of those three, Unser was in front on the previous lap. That would mean, if this is the way it turns out, and Carol Yarbrough would win the race, that Unser would be placed seventh, would get those six points, and there would have to be a five-lap runoff for the championship. Woo. It's to Chris Economaki. Mary, you were over there when Al had his problems. What set it up? Well, he, I guess he tried to get in line right behind me, and he nudged my quarter panel and spun him around. Uh, so he did. 
didn't do and you know enough to bother me but uh, he just made a slight miscalculation there and then you know he just started going uh, you know one end to the other Jackie let's see if we can see what happened here that's Al Unser on the inside on the right of the first row as we look at it well, it looks like that Al Unser, the car suddenly got very unstable, whether it was hit from behind or whether something went wrong with the motor car mechanically, but look what happens there. Then he comes into contact with the car on the left-hand side of your screen. That's Andretti. And what happens there is that Al Unser's applied opposite lock. He's sliding Ooh. now. He's going across. He's just missed by another car. Remember, this surface here is very wet. There's been an enormous amount of rain here at Daytona. Look at it skirmishing across there. Al Unser looking where he's going, trying to find a direction for his car, Ooh. and it hits that sandbank. It goes up into the air. I've never seen a car do that. It's heading towards the lake now, and the car grinds to a stop before it reaches the water. I have never seen a car at Daytona Speedway ever get that high. What an enormous impact. Alan so was extremely lucky. Only again, the tremendous safety, the seat belts, and everything else helped him out. Well, Gordy, how close were you to what happened, and can you describe it to us? Well, uh, Chris, I was right at where it started. Uh... Uh, Mario was leading it, uh, Al was running second, and I was third, and I was behind Mario, and Al come up uh, too close to the wall, uh, you know, I guess he, he probably couldn't see me and didn't know I was there, same incident like we had at Michigan, and he come up next to the wall, and I was in there and couldn't get out, and he just, uh, his back end clipped my left front and uh, started him going. Well, now, there is the ambulance and Richard Petty being loaded into it. Again, the word is he is conscious on the backstretch, there's no sign of apparent injuries. However, he'll be taken immediately to the track hospital there. Rutherford and Unser also climbing in. It's obligatory that all these people in the crash at least go to be checked over. Al Unser's car is obviously through for the day. Should there be that five-lap runoff, they'd have to get him another automobile, and, of course, there are standby cars. Again to Chris. Sir, how close were you to the skirmish, Darrell? I was right behind... Uh... Richard, I guess it was. Uh, Al Unser was running down low on the outside, and Al had done just about wrecked everybody that he got alongside of. Come off the corner back there and got into Richard, to, and they went to wreck him, and I just shot between them. Was lucky. I tell you, you know, this is the International Race of Champions, and these guys are supposed to be professionals, but uh, this is reminds me a lot of a half mile race. Some sharp comments there from uh, Daryl Waltrip down in the pits with Chrissy Konamaki. Well, here is Petty's car being taken away. In the side, as you can see, it was hit right in the driver's door there, the rear portion of the driver's door, really. Okay, Chris has more, I think. Hey, Kale, when you made your stop to change the tire, you took on four tires. If you'd taken on one, you might not have lost a lap. Why did you go for all four? Well, really, we shouldn't have lost a lap with all four. You know, it shouldn't take that long to change four tires. But uh, out there, in, in all the wind and all the traffic, I couldn't tell exactly be a fifty thousand dollar tire change very well could be and then on the other hand i could be over on the back stretch you never know what now, what's the strategy now when it restarts well the only thing i can uh do chris is try to get out front again and hope for another caution flag to make that lap up it's going to be all an uphill battle for kale yarborough from now on but it just could still happen it could happen for kale here today He's disappointed, as you can see, but let's look again at that crash. It's Al Unser on the right of your screen on the first row. There he is, touching Mario Andretti, sliding down in the infield. John Cott just getting by him in that yellow car, as you saw, then hitting this sandbank. If he had not hit that sandbank, if it wasn't there, he obviously would have gone into the infield lake. That happened here years ago. A driver was down there for about a minute before he finally hopped to the surface. However, it didn't happen this time. Now, the third car involved in the crash, Johnny Rutherford, still hidden under the hood, which slid all the way back over the windshield. What a wild afternoon at Daytona. Stay with us. Passive. Gee, what a long and exciting series it's been. It started at Irish Hills in Michigan, went to Riverside in California, finally here to Daytona. Started with 12 little Indians, you might say, and then there were nine that made the trip here. Soon there will only be one winner. It looks like Al Lancer will get the $50,000. It's a hazy, chilly day here. But here they come. They're setting up for the finish in the final race of this year's IROC series at Daytona. Two laps to go now. The leader in the race is still Mario Andretti. In second place, Carol Yarbrough. Remember, his only hope of winning the overall series would be to get past Andretti, then to have a yellow flag on these last two laps to somehow catch up and then pass Andretti again. It looks most unlikely at this point. The way they're going now, unofficially, we get it that Al Unser, although he crashed and was out of the race earlier, will win the overall series with 62 points. 
Gail Yarbrough would finish second and win $26,000. Munson getting $50,000. Third would be Waltrip for $24,000. And in fourth place, Andretti with twenty-two, Staying just the same, very much the same, with less than two to go. And remember, as you're looking at this screen right now, Gail Yarbrough is not, in fact, in second position in the race. No, no. Because he's no, no. one lap down. Although he's second on your screen right now, he's not holding that position in the overall race. There's another race going on for that, and there is the white flag, and Mario Andretti is sitting there. He's going to win this race. I doubt very much whether Keo Yarbrough will try to slingshot him now because there's no benefit for Keo Yarbrough to do that, and in so doing, it could endanger the win for Mario Andretti, but there is, there is the pack behind there. They've yeah. got a race on. Gordon Johncock and Darrell Waltrip and Benny Parsons. Lots of other prize money involved in this race. It goes on down the line. 5th, 6th, and 7th, 20,000, 17, 5, 16. And the last man in this field, placed ninth, gets $12,000. Half a lap to go. Cale Yarbrough's chances have gone to win the overall series. He could slingshot and get back on the same lap, but remember, he will not even win this race. Uh, bad strategy, it appears, on the pit stop he made under the green. Will it cost him the uh, chance at the overall championship? Here he is, going to do the slingshot to get back on the same lap, and he does. Unlaps himself just at the finish line. Here come the second, third, and fifth cars in the race. Now, and Benny Parsons. Jobber, of course, will be placed fourth. It's all over at Daytona, and here is the way it ended in race number four. Andretti the winner. Then, as you see, Waltrip, John Cox, Jobber, Parsons, Jackie Ix, Al Unser, Petty, and Rutherford, all three of whom were involved in the crash. A look at the money in this series. Al Unser, the winner of $50,000. Andretti, in the final official standings, is placed second with $26,000. Then Yarbrough and Waltrip tie, as you see. And here, the back markers, you might say, with the lowest men, Steve Hobart and Rutherford, each receiving still $7,500. Not bad for a very exciting series of racing. Again, Andretti and Yarbrough coming in there. They'll all be coming in, and we'll have some interviews in the pits in a minute. 38, Al Unser, two-time winner of the Indianapolis 500, has now added his first championship for the International Race of Champions. Mario Andretti won the fourth race. A little bit of happiness for him because he plays second overall in the series, won $26,000. Chris is down there with both of them. All right, Chris. Well, here we are in victory lane with the two winners of the final round of the IROC, Mario Andretti and Al Unser. Al, you won the series. Congratulations, Mario. You won the race. Congratulations. Let's turn around so you can look at your faces here. A couple of happy guys. That was quite a drive on the last lap, Mario, with Cale. It was a lap down. What do you think was in his mind? Well, Cale just, uh, I can just thank him for winning the race, really, because uh, he hooked on to me, and uh, just, um, if he would have started playing around, uh, the pack probably would have caught me, but uh, I had a seemingly, seemingly a good car, a good engine, and all I needed is somebody to just hook, hook up with me. And uh, I can just thank him for it because uh, I don't think I could have done it myself. You know, you won the, the Daytona 500 here a number of years ago, a lot of drafting. You haven't forgotten, have you? Well, you don't forget, but there's always something to learn. Mario Andretti very nearly missed being involved in that crash. That's his car on the left, and you'll notice that Al Unser touched him earlier in the race when the series winner went out of this particular race. Sliding down into the muck and the mire in this wet, soaked infield, headed for that sandbank that for some criticism.